Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how to make a switch mode power supply and check you through a simple fiber switch mode power supply with a complete circuit description and how to make one. Before we get to the working of the circuit, let's have a look at a simple framework switch mode power supply. In its simplest form, it will look as shown. You have the input voltage, which can be enough from about 100 to 325 volts DC. You need a switch, which can be a MOSFET or just any by power transistor, and a ferret con transformer, which can handle the high frequency needed to operate at lower inductances. Capacity 1 filters the input voltage, the primary winding, and the MOSFET are connected in series. The working behind this is very simple. You need a control signal which can be from an IC or microcontroller or just any oscillating circuit. Let's say a high pass is being fed to the gate of the MOSFET switch 1. It will cause current to flow from the positive of the input footage through the primary winding, through the MOSFET and to the negative rail action. The direction and position of the diode on the secondary side will prevent it from conducting and so because there is no energy transfer to the secondary side, all the energy flowing through the primary side will be stored in the form of the transformer in the form of a magnetic field. After some time, a low pass will be fed to the gate of the MOSFET and it will cause it to turn off. This will cut off the current flow through the primary winding, and now all the energy stored in the core of the transformer will be transferred to the secondary side, and now the diode will be point biased and it will conduct and charge the output capacitor and power in the load connected. In the second on state, because the capacitor is charged, it will continue powering the load. And now the process repeats. The resistor RSL CSL a delta 5 is a simple snapper network. Basically, what this does is that it will short circuit any high voltage pipe generated across the primary winding and so protect the MOSFET from getting damaged. Now, back to the circuits, you need a powerful MOSFET. You can use the IRF840, but this will limit the circuit power to about 60 watts. With the IRF P460, you can easily obtain more than 100 watts. At the input, you have your mains, which can be 110 to 240 volts. There's a filter made up of the capacitor C1 and the inductors L1. This is a fuse to limit the overall current flowing through the circuit. The diodes D1 to D4 make a bridge required to convert the AC into DC, and this will charge the bulk capacitor C2 to filter the percentage DC to obtain a smooth DC. RT1 is a dummy star to limit the initial inrush current when changing the capacitor C2 during the up. On this line, you'll have anywhere from 150 to 325 volts depending on the control region. The working of the circuit is very simple. Because the gate of the MOSFET is pulled up to the DCC, the MOSFET will conduct and so it will allow current to flow from the high voltage DC through the primary winding, through the MOSFET, through the current sense resistor R4 and the negative rule as shown. Then a diode D5 protects the gate of the MOSFET from many voltages above 15 volts. Energy will be stored in the core of the transformer in the form of a magnetic field and as mentioned earlier, the diode D8 will be reverse biased and so it will be off and no current will flow to the secondary side during the first on cycle. The auxiliary winding provides a positive bias to the gate of the MOSFET and this causes it to change the gate very fast and turn on very fast. After some time, the current flowing through the primary winding will stop decreasing and the feedback from the auxiliary winding will be in a manner such that it will be opposing the gate bias of the MOSFET Q2 and so the MOSFET will begin turning off. This will cause a negative polarity voltage to be induced on the auxiliary winding and this will cause the MOSFET to completely turn off very fast. Once it has completely turned off, all the energy stored in the core of the transformer will be converted to electric energy and transferred to the secondary side where it will be used to fund bias the diode D8, change the output capacitor C7 in power the road connected on the secondary. During the second on cycle, the energy stored in the capacitor C7 will continue to power the output loads. The process will repeat many thousand times per second. The resistor R5, diode D6 and capacitor C4 make a voltage number network to dissipate any extra energy that is not transferred to the secondary side because otherwise it will cause a voltage spike across the drain and source of the MOSFET and potentially damage the MOSFET. The circuit has both current and voltage regulation. Voltage regulation is by means of the optocopra and the Zener diode D9. When the output voltage gets to about 12.7 volts, the Zener diode D9 will conduct and it will cause current to flow from the positive of the 12 volts through the resistor 9 through the Zener diode D9 through the internal LED of the optocopra and to the negative rail of the output secondary side. This will cause the internal transistor to conduct 
and because there's a voltage developed on the auxiliary winding and on the terminals of the capacitor C5, current will flow from the positive terminal to the transistor and to the base of the fin pack auxiliary transistor Q1, which will basically turn it on and cause it to shunt the gate of the MOSFET to the negative rail, turning off the MOSFET Q2. This will limit the duty cycle and so prevent any further increase of voltage on the output secondary sign. In case there is a short circuit or overcurrent draw on the output sign, it will cause a much larger current to flow on the primary sign and because the resistor R4 is connected across the base and emitter of the auxiliary transistor Q1, when about 3 amperes flows through R4, there will be a voltage drop of about 0.65 volts at this terminal and this will cause Q1 to conduct and connect the gate of the MOSFET to the negative rail causing it to turn off. So basically that's a way of current permitting and short circuit protection. By limiting the primary current draw, you can limit the overall output current or power on the secondary side. The transformer windings are as shown. The primary is 30 turns, the secondary is 7 turns, and the auxiliary is 3 turns. When winding the primary, you need to wind the initial 15 turns, then add about 5 layers of insulation, make the secondary winding of 7 turns, then add 5 layers of insulation, then make the auxiliary 3 turns, and about 3 layers of insulation make the remaining 15 turns of the primary winding. This way, the entire secondary and auxiliary turns are sandwiched between the primary winding and this will maximize efficiency by optimizing coupling between the primary and the secondary and auxiliary windings. The transformer should be a ferrite cone transformer which you can easily obtain from switch mode power supply such as a computer gate power supply or just about any other switch mode power supply you can get around. Thank you for watching and I hope you really like this video. Don't forget to comment, share, subscribe to my channel. Have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.